Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Can you feel the Spirit of God here today? Amen. 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 I want to be blessed that we're here. The weather is starting to be nice and everybody is outside. They're all busy planning their uh, lives, what to do on the weekend. But we thank God that God is leading all our feet here in His house of worship. And we are so blessed. I could feel His holy presence today. Yes. And God is good all the time, right? All the time, God is good. And we are blessed we have a visitor. A special one. And uh, her name is Sister Bunmi. And uh, we welcome her here in Apostolic Pay Church of Toronto. And good morning to everybody and also to all who are tuning in today. Bless each and every one. And uh, before anything else, let's sing and give our praise to the Lord. Let's turn our hymn book to page 329. The title is Turn Your Eyes, I mean, uh, Look to the Lamb of God, 328. 328. When shadows on your path, look to the Lamb of God. Enjoy your sorrow, Christ is all in all. Look to the Lamb of God. Amen. Okay, let's start with our Bible drill. For the primary, the title is We Love Jesus Too. And the uh, uh, memory verse is found in John, 13, ver John 12, verse 13. And for the answer, the title is White Water. 
and their memory verses found in Psalm 119, verse 37, and for desserts, the title is Eyes, and their memory verse is found in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Let's call on Renee. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. John chapter 12, verse 15. Amen. What about Matteo? You can't. <laughs> Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. John chapter 12, verse 13. Amen. God Amen. bless you, Mateo. And let's call on Moses. <laughs> Paul. Sorry. Hosanna. <laughs> Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. John chapter 12, verse 13. <laughs> Amen. Next is Joshua. Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. John chapter 12, verse 13. Amen. Give it to the, uh, Isaac. <sighs> Hosanna, blessed the king of Hosanna, blessed the king of Israel, that come in the name of the law. John chapter 12, verse 13. Amen. What about Isa? Blessed. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed. Is the king of Israel. Of the government in the name of the Lord John, Amen. Let's call on Sister Debbie. Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. John chapter 12, verse 13. Amen. Let's call on uh, Adi Yemi. Ozada. Ozada. Blessing is the king of Asia that coming in the name of the Lord. Amen. John, verse 12, verse 30. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's call on to for the answer. Adidayo. Oh, okay, Ogalua. Let's go first. Turn away my eye from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. Psalm 119, verse 37. Amen. Adidayo, please. Turn away my uh, mine eyes from beholding vanity and quicken, and quicken thou me in thy way. Psalm chapter 119, verse 37. Amen. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Psalm chapter 119, verse 37. Amen.
and Psalm 119, verse 37. Amen. God bless you all. And let's turn our hymn book again before prayer. Page 329, we're just going to sing the chorus twice. And open our eyes, Lord. And after uh, the open our eyes, Lord, we have to uh, stand up for prayer. And uh, I'll ask Sister Michelle to lead us in prayer. Sing open our eyes, Lord. Father, King of glory, creator of heaven and earth, I want to thank you, Lord, for bringing us again this Sunday, your blessed day to worship and adore your name. O oh Lord, we pray that as we come before you, you may open our eyes, you may open our ears, O oh Lord, open our eyes to open our hearts to receive your word, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, that you may come down in a mighty way and be with us today, O oh Lord. Amen. We thank you for journey mercy, for bringing us here this morning. We pray, O oh Lord, that you may be with those who are on their way. We pray, O oh Lord, that even those who are joining us via WebEx, you may be with them as well, O oh Lord. Bless their homes. Bless everyone present who have honored you this morning, O oh Lord. Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, for everyone who you use today during the service, for more singing, testimonies, the word, O oh Lord. We pray that everything that may come forth, Lord, will be your word from your throne, O oh Lord. Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, that it may be food to our hearts, food to our souls. Help us, O oh Lord, to be better Christians, O oh Lord, to love you and to love our neighbors as ourselves, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, can we uh, welcome Sister Bunmi? There's a welcome. There's a welcome.
Let's sing the marching song. Morning, everybody. Okay, that feels cold. Is it the weather? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. More like it. I hope we all had a great week. Yes? No? Good. All right. We thank God for another opportunity He's given to us to study. My prayer is that He will bless our study this together this morning. And we will leave here inspired. We will leave here encouraged. And we will leave here challenged. Amen. Amen. All right. What's the title of our study this morning? Any volunteer? Anybody? Eyes. Eyes. Beautiful. Eyes. Thank you, Ma. You know, if it was a children's class, I would say, touch your eyes. Right? We all have eyes. What do we use it for? <laughs> to see. All right. If you... If you... About. You know, it's from a spiritual perspective, you know, we want to focus on using our eyes, you know, focusing on the right things, ensuring that um, we um, Together, before we go into studying or reading the, key ver the verses, the scripture, well, some of the, the text for the lesson, I will ask that we take our key verse together. So, after the count of two, let's do it um to go for all Yes. Yes or no? Yes or yes? Yes. <laughs> Always yes. May God help us so that our eyes, that songwriter says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. May God help us. May God help you and I to focus our eyes on beautiful things. There's this um, analogy we have at the back of our lesson that talks about a camera. The camera is a device. We all know what a camera is, right? You, these days, technology has made it possible to, for everybody to own a camera. Once you have a smartphone, you probably have a camera, right? If you focus your camera on something beautiful, what does the camera capture? Beautiful things, right? But if you focus the camera on um, maybe a waste bin or garbage, what does it capture? Beautiful things still? Yeah, no. If you, if you focus on the garbage, it captures garbage. So that's the thing about the eye, too. The eye is like that camera. You know, it, it, and then the, the, there's a popular saying, the eye is the inlet to the mind, right? If you focus your eyes on beautiful things, the beautiful thing goes into your heart. If you focus your eyes on garbage, what happens to the heart? Beautiful things still? No. The, remember, so we want God to help us to focus our eyes on the right things. You know, and uh, when I talk about eye, it's not just the physical eye, but we're talking about what? Our spiritual eyes. 
you know, although we do need the physical eyes to get those things done, but at the same time, you know, I pray that God will help you and I to, to understand this lesson. That's why when I started, I said, may God help you and I to leave this lesson challenged, encouraged, and more determined to focus on things that would encourage us spiritually. I'm um, quickly returning to our, key, our scriptural text. Um, we want to take um, Psalm 121. We read verses 1 and 2. Um, I'll appreciate volunteers. And um, I also want to do Matthew 14, 22 to 33. So my ask is just open in advance and just get up once it gets to your turn. And please walk up to a mic or, okay, we're going to get a mic come to you. Or right, Rabbi Lake is standing here, sir. So he's taking Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. So somebody get ready for the next one and so we can enjoy time. I will lift up my, uh, my eyes unto the ears. From whence cometh my help? Two. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Thank you, sir. Next, uh, Matthew 14. Thank you, sir. Matthew 14, 22. And straight away, Jesus con constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitude away. 23, and when he sa had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. 24, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Those with waves for the wind was contrary. 25, and in the port watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. 26, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is, it is a sprint, and they cried out of the fear. 27, but straight away Jesus speak unto them, saying, be a good cheers. It is I be not afraid. 28, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee of the water. 29, and he said, come, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 30, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Amen. 31, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Amen. 32, and when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. 33, they, then and they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, O a truth, thou art the Son of God. Amen. May God help you and I. You know, through that story we just read, to focus our eyes on the right thing. The circumstances may be discouraging, but when your focus is on who? Is on Jesus. We would always come out on top. Um, quickly, Luke 11, 34 to 36. Luke chapter 11. Thank you, sir. Verse 34. The light of the body is the house. Therefore, when thine eyes is single, thy whole body also is full of light. Amen. But when thy eyes is evil, thy body is also is full of darkness. Uh -huh. 35. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. 36. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of the light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light. And when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Amen. Thank you. Um, let's go to Mark chapter 9, verse 47. And somebody also read um, Luke 24, 31. Quickly, Mark 9, 47. And Luke 24, 31. Thank you. Mark chapter 9, verse 47. 
Yeah. Mark 9, 30, 47. Thank you, ma'am. 4, 7. Okay, verse 47. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to be to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast onto hellfire. Hmm. May God help us. And finally, we do Luke 24, verse 31. All right, I'll do that. Luke 24, 31. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. It's my prayer that this morning, that God will open all blind eyes, spiritually blind eyes, and give us, help you to see. You know, we, there's a lot of analogy in this lesson that talks about how those blind eyes were opened and they saw the glory of God. So my prayer that God would do that for each and every one, whosoever will, who wants those eyes open this morning, that God would do that for you in Jesus' name. Going back to the focus of our lesson, you know, the, the, the objective is um, it lists the pitfall, you know, the, we'll be able to list the pitfall of focusing our eyes on things that are promoted by the devil and his followers. In contrast, we'll also be able to list the benefits that come to those who keep their eyes on things that are spiritually beneficial. So, you know, the, this lesson looks to um, one you, one me, pardon me for this, one us, you know, of the risk of focusing on wrong things and things that may look edifying, but spiritually, that may look physically edifying, but spiritually denourishing. And encourage you and I to focus our eyes on things that will make you better, that will make me better. May God help us to learn that lesson this morning. Amen. And quickly, I'd like somebody to volunteer to read the introduction, and then we go in. Any volunteer for the introduction, the introduction piece? Go ahead, sir. Thank you. The Bible says that uh, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. One of the most uh, striking examples of this statement in the human eye is the human eye. It is mentioned at least 534 times in scripture. Our eyes were created to adapt uh, to extreme sunlight or near darkness. Um, in the dark, their sensitivity uh, increases 10,000 times so that one can detect a faint glow, less than a thousandth of bright as a candle's glow. God gave us color vision superior to most animals. Its retina, uh, contains about 130 million cells which co connect with the brain to provide instantaneous response. It has been estimated that from the vast uh, panorama presented by our eyes, each eye can send a billion impulses per second to the brain. Then our mind chooses significant details. We can stare at the sign without becoming aware of its message, while on the other hand, a fragmentary glimpse, glimpse of some familiar object attracts our attention immediately. Thank you very much. And from what um, we just heard, we understand and appreciate the beauty about the eye. I actually took some time to research, and I googled, obviously, Google is a friend, and say, what, what about the eye? This is what he says. says, the eye is a sensory organ, part of the sensory nervous system that reacts to visible light and allows us to use visual information for various purposes, including seeing things. And it also helps you keep your balance and maintain a psychedelic rhythm. I don't know what that is. But, you know, visual perception, you know, is the ability to interpret the surrounding environment through photopic vision color. I know, but I'm saying that this morning, the focus is not on the physical eye because it applies, the lesson applies to both people who can use the physical eyes to see and those who are limited with that, in that ability. It, the lesson is focused on our spiritual eye, you know, how you can focus your eyes on things that would edify you spiritually, you know, and so I know we cannot take away, we, we, we can parallel the physical with the spiritual, but at the same time, we would use that transition to explain this lesson. So from the description and from the introduction we had, we appreciate that as human beings, we are wonderfully and carefully made by God. You know, he taught about everything. He provided the eyes and he created us for every purpose, you know, and we, there's a part of the Bible that says, there's no part of the body, I don't, I'm not quoting here, you know, you can, the hand can't say it's not part of the hand, neither can the eye say it's not part. Every part is playing a role. I know this morning we're seeing how the eye 
is that intake into the mind. You know, we've studied about the heart, we've talked about the mind and other parts of the body, but the eyes is that visual, that gives you that visual, that sensory ability to recognize, you know, people, you know, to adapt to your environment. You know, sometimes for us, you can see danger and flee from it. You know, may God help you that we will, through this lesson, focus our eyes on um, things that are most important. But Matthew chapter 5, verse 29, is very instructive. You know, we read that. It says, and if thy right hand offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it profited, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members shall perish, and not that thy whole body shall be cast into hell. You know, we, are just, we just talked about how beautifully made we are with, the, with, with our visual eye. But the Bible here is telling you that, you know, if one eye is going to cause you trouble, you should take it out. So does that mean you should blow one eye out? What is the lesson? What's, that, what's the Bible trying to warn us about here? Any, and I'll appeal that we make the class very interactive because I do say from time to time we've learned this lesson. We know these things. But because by the Spirit of God wants to bring this to your remembrance, wants to challenge you to a newer height, and that's why we're bringing. So well, let's make the class as interactive as we can. So why is it Matthew chapter five verse twenty nine saying this? Yes, sir. Well, what Matthew is trying to, what I understand from that passage is that there is no price too high for us to pay uh, in order to ensure our spiritual integrity. Um, you know, even if it costs us something as important as one eye. You know, we should be happy and willing to pay that price in order to ensure that, you know, spiritually we are whole. Thank you. Very on point. Any comments, any additions to that? You're right. So, yes, ma'am. Our house is very important. And so we have to be extremely careful what we use our eyes to see. If we, because it registers in our heart. It's the gateway to our souls. So if we look at anything that is not spiritual, then it registers in our heart. And if we spend our time reading the word of God and looking at things that we edify our spirit and our soul, then it's very important because all these things, we are going to stand before God. We have to eventually, so we have to be careful what we use our eyes to see. Thank you very much, ma'am. And so we will agree that from the comments we've heard and from what we understand about the scripture, it's, it's, it's a warning. You know, we do agree that the mind, the eye is in the gateway to the soul, to the mind. You know, and so we've got to protect it. And so what these <coughs> verses is talking about is, is telling you to bring more control. You know, as Christians, we call ourselves soldiers of Christ. And the life of a soldier is, I will say, very regimented, right? They, they are strict rules. They probably have diets. You know, when you see a soldier with a pot belly, you wonder, <laughs> what kind of soldier is that? <laughs> does he do the drill? Or, you know, does this, you know? So you, you see me, you know I'm not a soldier, right? <laughs> but on a serious note, the, 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 what I'm trying to say is as Christians, we're called to a very strict discipline. And that's what they say. You know, what, you want to be very careful what your eyes focus on. Because if it goes in, your eye sees it, the, the, the mind adapts it, and then your body starts to process it. But, you know, we don't want to be that Christian who is careless. You know, as Christians, we, we know what we shouldn't do. You know, and when you truly have the Spirit of God in you, the moment you even accidentally see it, the Spirit of God will instantly cut it. You don't, that doesn't belong to you. You move on. You know, social media for the younger ones, you know, it's, 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 a very, it's, a very, it's something that comes to mind easily. You know, in, initially, in the days of our fathers, it, it was TV. But TV is even a bit more controlled. Social media, when you go on the internet, it's whatever you want to see. But as Christians, we want to be guided. You know, even if it flashes, you know, you just want to move away. You know, may God help you and I. You know, also, in addition to that, you know, Scripture is full of examples of people, you know, who focus their eyes on the good things and the consequences. And those who also, oh, sorry, on the good things and the good results they got. And then who focus their eyes on troublesome things? Who didn't, who didn't let the eye... We didn't control that eye as it were, you know, and we also saw the consequences. And um, we have the good example of um, in Joshua, in Joshua chapter 5, verse 13, right? We, quickly, as Bible student, without really going to that, I believe we've read it, we've studied our lessons at home. What can you, so as, I, as we go through that, we're looking at the second point. As we go through each of those points, can you spend about 30 seconds to talk about it and the good or the bad in that story? Any quick, anybody, Joshua chapter 5, yes, go ahead, sir. 
see Joshua in that passage uh, from the place of prayer. He saw an angel, and then um, he, he received, uh, he received uh, a victory. You know, the angel pro prophesied victory uh, in the battle he was about to fight uh, because he focused his eyes on the angel, and he addressed the angel. Good. His mind was in the right place. He was looking for help. He, he probably he just got uh, the, the responsibility, and you know, he was going to war. And he said, who is this person? He's, and he, God opened his eyes, and he saw something. You know, the captain, and he was visited by the captain of the host of the Lord. May that person visit you, and may the captain of the Lord's host visit you and I today in Jesus' name. And may he give you assurance of the victory ahead of you in Jesus' name. I'll quickly, we also want a story of David in Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 2. Yes, ma'am. So pass in an evening tender that David rose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing her face. Washing herself, a woman was very beautiful to look upon. And someone eyes go straight to that woman. Thank you, thank you very much. David. Yeah, so David in this story, in this analogy, his eye strayed. His mind wasn't properly right. He, he saw a beautiful woman. You know, there's nothing, you, you behold beautiful people, but you know, what do you do with it? The Bible says he lost it with her and he acted upon it. His eye was not in the right place and it led him to react wrongly. But we thank God for the mercy of God. You know, and it's also thank you for the lessons we have here also. You know, when you behold something, quickly, I remember a man of God, you know, said it a few years ago. He said, when you see something the first time, and you know it's not, you take your eye. But by the time you're going back to look at it the second time, there's already a problem there. Because you're ready, your mind has taken it in and you're like, oh, okay. But as Christians, you know, when we are covered by the blood of Jesus, when those circumstances come away, when we focus, Jesus wash me with your blood. You know, the Spirit, the Bible, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard in you, you know, and you will resist such things. May God, this morning, help you and I to get the necessary steps that when we even get into a situation that will, be, will, will tempt us, that the Spirit of God will raise up that standard to overcome such temptations. And we are sure that there's no temptation that comes to us. You know, that we are not able to overcome. Even when it's come, we, we have that grace. Jesus wash me with your blood. That's a powerful prayer. And we're able to overcome and move on to victory. May God give us wonderful testimonies of such victories. Also, Elisha is another area we want to focus on. Yes, ma'am. Elisha was with uh, Elijah. And when he asked for a double portion, he asked for a double portion and Elijah told him, okay, if you see me when going, then you get it. So it's, a, it's a, the question of the, what he was asking for was much better. Elijah, you know, saw Elijah when he departed in a whirlwind because he has his eyes open. Thank you. Focus Thank on you. Elijah. Thank that's you. why you could get that uh, double portion. Thank you. And that, that's a very good story for us this morning. You know, Elisha was desirous of a blessing and he was given a condition. And the condition was focus attention to details be on the lookout you know as christians that's what we want to be always attentive always at attentive to information around us especially things of god you know and he said if once you see me when i'm taken away you get the, you get your request will be answered i'm sure if god if someone if you are told that how would you what would you be doing personally from a, if, if someone said oh this prayer you've been offering to god all you have to do is fulfill this instruction that was given to Elisha, how would you react? What would you do? Your eyes, will you take a nap at that time? Everything will be distracted. You will lock out your mind, every form of distraction, and you will focus on that man because that's your blessing. You know, and that's a story for us too. You know, our attention should be focused on Christ because that's why we are here. You know, let's not use our cell phones as a means of distraction. Let's not, you know, sometimes it's good to put it off or even put it in vibration or put it away from you. Because trust me, it's a very good, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great distraction. But if, if we, because we know why we are here, we're here to get the fullest of God's blessing. And we don't want anything. If it's going to be your wife 
or your kids, what we thank God for our, our children, you know, we want to put them in, make sure that they're in that condition that they are not distracting us. Anything that will make us lose focus when that happens, because Elisha wasn't told it's going to happen at 22.00 hours. He wasn't told. It was just be at attention when it's going to happen. Once you see me, when it happens, I, I, he, he was, I'm sure he cleaned his eyes. Probably he went out, washed his eyes clean. Make, I must see this thing. May God help you to see so that the blessings that attend to seeing things of God will follow you. We also have the story of Elisha's servant, and that's a very unique one, and that's why I prayed that prayer this morning. You know, they were surrounded by circumstance, which is very similar to the story of Peter. The circumstances around them, they didn't look like it. It was like, oh, an army. In the case of Peter, storm. And as humans, we know what happens. When an army surrounds you, what happens? They would overrun you. When you are on the water and it's turbulent and it's stormy, what will happen? You will drown. That's the natural flow of things. But we thank God that we have a God who changes the, the natural, who can change the natural cause. He says the heart of the kings is what? It's in the hand of the Lord. What does he do? He would direct it like streams of water. Right? That's the God we serve, the awesomeness of our God. And so that's what, you know, that's where we want to focus on this morning. We don't want, the, the troubles will be there. You know, they make us better. I like this analogy. When you look at athletes, super athletes, well, or people who build or go into, when they, to, to get to that level, that height, or even academicians, to get to that height, how do they get there? Relaxed? Drinking coffee? No. It's in the place of pain, in the place of struggle, in, this, in the place of challenging their status quo. They achieve those heights. And so for, for this man, those circumstances around him, they, were, so they challenge him. The faith comes in there. But this man of God, we thank God that for that man of God, he prayed a simple prayer. He said, God, open his eyes that he may see. It's my prayer this morning that God would open our eyes collectively, individually, that we may see the glory and the beauty that God has provided for us here in Toronto. And that when we see, we will claim the blessing. You know, it's a different thing to see, but it's a different thing to move on to the next level. May God help you and I to, be, to challenge ourselves. So whatever the circumstance may be, it may be financial, it may be academic, it may be marital, put a, pro, put, put a name on that problem. But don't look at that problem. Look at the awesomeness of your God. Look at the, you know, that, that song where it says, how big is God? How big is he? He's, he's big enough to rule the mighty universe. But what? Small to love to what? To live in my heart. Oh, so when you appreciate the beauty of what Christ has done, and this is season of Easter, and when we appreciate the, the beauty of what he said, for God to love the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, that's the simple word, believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. He talked about faith also. In, in, in this story here, there's a lot that we can learn from that. You know, my prayers are God will help you, will help me to think deep. You know, the beauty of these lessons, and, and I say this, I, 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 I crave your indulgence, personally, the weekly lessons always apply to me weekly. It's always relevant weekly. When I'm dealing with issues, it is relevant. I don't know if for you. So may God help you to, to, to take the time to dig deep and study this lesson and meditate on them and get the fullness of it that the Holy Spirit himself will inspire, will teach you new things. You know, that's the beauty of the Bible. You might read the same verse. A hundred times I get a hundred interpretations when the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. May God help you and I to get the full of that blessing. And so the long and short of that story about Elisha seven was when God opened his eyes. What did he see? What did he see? Well, Bible students, we read this. What did he see? Chariots of fire. And how did he feel? He, was, he felt comfortable. He knew, no, this is not a problem. This circumstance is temporal. He knew he was assured of victory. So my prayer this morning, that God will open your eyes, that you see the necessary chariots of fire that will give you the victory that you need in that area of your life. And also, well, we talked about Peter, about the destruction in the surroundings, and, and also we have the story of Saul, that um, he saw the great light on his way to Damascus. That was his transformation. So we, we see that the, 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 we've seen the beauty of using our eyes to see beautiful things and the blessings that come with it. And we saw an example of the eye, you know, focused on the wrong thing. We also have the story of Lot. And in, in, in one of the texts we did not read, you know, 
you know, and, and, and that for us, we know that story, Abraham a lot, you know, the different, Abraham gave him that opportunity to choose first, but, um, you know, culturally, you know, it's always polite to say, allow the older to do things, but on a, on a, on a deeper level, even if he chose first, if probably he was, the heart was right, probably, I'm, I, I'm not really trying to add to or take away from the Bible, but if probably he was, he, he, he was, his heart was guided, you know, he probably wouldn't have fallen into the kind of troubles he fell through down the line. So, you know, my prayer is that, you know, we want to get to that level that even when we see things, we want our actions will be guided by the Spirit of God. Yes, we're protecting, we're praying that God will help us to focus on more spiritually healthy things, but at the same time, we also want to fo that the, 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 the follow-up action on our part will bring blessings to us. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Moving on, we've also, according, we talked about some of the things um, that the devil uses to distract us. Sorry, we've got barely 10 minutes, and so I'm trying to skip through. So, so let's quickly list some of those things. We talked about the television, we talked about the internet. What else, what are some of those things that um, could be a drag distraction? And at the same time, let's also look at some of the things that we can focus on that will be a blessing. So things that will focus that could be a distraction or bring us demerit spiritually, and fo things will focus that will build us spiritually. Quickly, let's make it interactive. We do these things every day. Yes, sir. Actually, um, situations at home uh, can actually distract us. Uh, uh, situations at home can easily distract us from uh, uh, serving the Lord God as well. So uh, we'll have to be very, very careful when our dealings with our families, our wives, husbands, and children, because that can cause uh, troubles. And, uh, in, um, and many, uh, and we know that, uh, you know, it, it, it has happened, and it's still happening up to this day, that um, even in the, our, our own homes, uh, basically, uh, will uh, cause you to be taken away from uh, serving the Lord God. Our workplaces is another one. We have to be very careful with our association with our co-workers. You know, things that they are doing, things that they, uh, you know, if it's not uh, palatable to us, then step away from uh, any of those conversations because uh, uh, we, it's not going to be uh, good for us. Thank you very much. Lesson, our lesson specifically points out some points, which I was, it talks about televisions, it talks about videos, it talks about billboards, magazines, novels. It talks about pornography and uh, horoscopes. You know, as Christians, there are things we just don't want to toy with. Because you may know, oh, I'm learning stuff there. No, you're not. What it does to your soul, what it does to your body, you don't know. You know, and I said, if you really have the Spirit of God, when you look at these things, the Spirit of God will tell you, this is not for you. And this I say from personal experience. Well, you, you just flip and say, move on. You know, move on. If we are sensitive to the Spirit of God. So may God help you and I to focus our eyes on the right things. You know, to, and to avoid what we can avoid. You know, we just started last week, you know, we were listening about the air. It's like, suppose they play music and you happen to not be able to control it. Yeah, but your eyes, suppose you're, somebody you're in an environment and you can't control what's happening. You can't close it, right? You can't close it. Nobody's, uh, are you sleeping? No, I'm not. <laughs> You know, well, there are things we can control with our eyes. Or you can whisper a prayer. These are practical things. you find yourself in circumstance. You know, with you respect David's story, you can't control, maybe, he, yeah, he saw it, but Jesus washed me with your blood, and you move on. But that man of God that says, the moment you, I saw it, wow. Wow. The second wow is already trouble. May God help us. Um, moving on. Um... Luke 11.34. The light, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. What is this lesson telling you? What's, it telling? What's that verse of the Bible telling us? What's it challenging us? We've talked about it extensively, but I would like us to expand on that based on your understanding. Yep. Yes, ma'am. It's like drawing a single line. Jesus is on the top, which is the, the top uh, dot, and you are down. So all the time, your eyes should be on Jesus. What do you spend your time doing? 
looking at videos, looking at YouTube, Facebook, WhatsApp, those things will distract you from looking at Jesus all the time. And Jesus can come any time. So it's what you're doing that is going to be registered against you. So we have to spend our time placing God, reading the word of God, spending time on our knees, praying for ourselves, for our community, for our church. Because Jesus said, I'm coming soon. And I'm going to give to everybody their reward. So we don't want to spend our time coming to church and missing heaven. May Amen. the Lord help us. Thank you. So I should have also read 35 and 36 of that verse. So we would have taken 5 and 6 together. I read 35. It says, Take it therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give the light. And on parallel to that, I want to add 1 John 6, verse 7. It says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with him. And I think the blood of Jesus Christ is son cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So paralleling those two verses, it's very instructive. What you focus your eye on becomes a habit. Right? If you focus your eyes on reading the Bible, it becomes a habit. You know, if you focus your eyes on looking on TikTok, and sometimes I'm guilty of that, confession, right? You, you know, it becomes a habit. It becomes your default. You hold your phone, that's the first thing you do. Or you wake up in the morning, that's the first thing you're looking at. Yeah, they're very beautiful videos. They make you laugh. But what do they do to your spirit? Right? May God help us to redirect our focus on the word of God. And he says, he says if, we have, if we say we walk, we, we felt, he says, um, if we say we have fellowship with him, what does fellowship mean? What does fellowship mean? Some is close association, right? Fellowship. If you have a close relationship. Thank you very much. If you have a close relationship with somebody, what, that, they, 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 I remember, sorry I'm being very personal here. I remember somebody way back, I was much younger, was looking for my dad. Then when we were still having camp meeting in, in Antonio, and he knew somebody, one of his friends, that they were always together. And he said, he, he, was, he, didn't, he, he just looked for that person. And then he said, that man was said, where's, where's, where's Bratobi, where Brat, the Bashobu caller? You know, it was because of that fellowship. He, they knew them together. And that's why that individual, was, so he came and said, ah, can you imagine this person was looking for you and he's asking from me? Uh, how am I supposed to know? But because they know that they were friends, they know that they were relationship, he felt that. If I ask this person, he would know where this person will be instead of looking for him around. And that's the fellowship. You know, we want to be that close-knit. May God help you and I. And how do we get to that level of friendship with him? By watching TikTok, by watching YouTube regularly. You know, even if we do those things, we can focus on things that would edify. You know, you know, uh, you know the Bible, fellowship, the word of God. Tons of material on the Apostolic website that we can leverage. You know, may God help us so that we can build that fellowship. You know, and the beauty about it is if I build that fellowship individually, when we come here, what happens? You're building that fellowship individually with Christ. You're building that fellowship with Christ. You're building with Christ. When we come here, what happens? We bring the Spirit in here. And the blessings will come. May God help us. You know, when we pray for revival, you know, it, it's, not, it's not something we walk up. It, it's individual walk. You're walking, you're walking, you're walking, you're walking, you're walking. I'm walking. I'm praying, you're reading your Bible, and then we come here, and we say, Lord, you said when two or three are gathered in your name, and he knows the two or three that are gathered in his name are already connected with him. What's it going to happen? He's going to come down, and the blessings will come. That's what we want in Toronto, and God will do it for us in Jesus' name. God will do it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, that amen should be more thunderous than that. God will do it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In closing, in closing, we have promised blessings if we look at the right things. And we've seen those examples. And we're also encouraged on how we can, Psalm 121 verse 1. It says, I will lift my eyes where? Onto the hills. From whence what? Cometh my help. My help cometh from God. Who what? Who created the heavens and earth. He that keepeth me will what? Will never sleep. What? He that keepeth Israel. Put your name there. He that keepeth Toby will never slumber nor sleep. Right? You know, that's the promise we have there. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 15 and 17, and we have James 1.25. Let's quickly read those verses. And, um, 
I believe James is whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continued therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You know, may God help you to constantly, constantly look, you know, onto that perfect law of liberty. And that's where we get the blessings. Remember, we're talking about the blessings from focusing on the right things. We've looked at the consequences of focusing on the wrong things, but the bless there's also blessings on focusing on the right thing. May God help you and I. And in wrapping, there's this point, the point. It says, consider the differences between physically blind and spiritually blind, which will be the greater handicap, and, and if any. When one is spiritually blind, or when you're physically blind, which is a greater handicap? Or which is a greater limitation from what we've talked about this morning? Why? Why? Thank you very much. Absolutely. Physical blindness is physical. You know, right? They are walk around, there are ways people take care of things like that. But when you're spiritually blind, how would you're, you're dead? Thank you very much. That's the word. You know, it's somebody who is physically blind is living, he is, he's able to do things. But somebody who is Spiritually blind, is dead. And how do dead people do? Are they able to? When you're dead, you're dead. You are. You, you can't move. You may be existing, but you're not connected with your God. And that's not what we want to be. We want to constantly be connected with our God. So my prayer, as we wrap up this lesson, that God will help you and I to awake. If you're spiritually blind, to awaken. My prayer also is that God will open your eyes, like the way He opens the eyes of that servant. You know. And the key verse for the answer class is very instructing. It says in Psalm 119, verse 37, it says, Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. May God do that for you. May God do that for me in Jesus' name. That's our lady. lesson. Let's rise up for prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this lesson, Lord. Accept our thanks and praises. You have reminded us of the importance of our eyes and the importance of focusing on things of God. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help us to focus our eyes on the more important things. We pray that you give us the grace also to withstand any temptations that will focus our eyes or take our eyes away from you. Once again, as we continue this service, we pray that we, you will bless your church and we'll leave here revived that we came. In Jesus' name we pray. We have five minutes to uh, for prayers and uh, go to the washroom, and we can and the uh, uh, the machine is going to start with uh, this service at exactly ten o five.